Okay, I'm here with Raquel Pennington. He's fighting Julia Avila on December 18th, UFC Fight Night. Raquel, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Um, how's life in Colorado right now? Oh, it's great. It's fall. It's perfect. My favorite time of the year, so nothing better. Good to get outside. You're quite like an outdoors person, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. First off on the fight now, um, what comes to mind when you think of Julia as an opponent? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, she's aggressive, uh, and she just goes out there. Um, when I think of the fight, it's almost exciting to me because I feel like she's, uh, going to drag out my aggressive side for sure. So it's going to play out for a very exciting fight. How long have you had your eye on her as a potential opponent? Are you the kind of person that likes to study the whole division? Honestly, I haven't. Um, I want to, I, I mean, for everybody who follows me, um, you know, I've had like some ups and downs going on the past few years and whatnot. And then this past year I fought Marion back in 2020. Um, and I felt like I was starting to get back to myself. And then all of a sudden I had the issue with USADA and my thyroid and stuff. And so it was just one thing after another and it just felt like another setback. Uh, when they took me out of the rankings, I was ranked number four obviously the goal here is to climb the ladder so now that I actually fought and they put me back in the rankings I think they have me as like maybe number nine or something like that um so my idea is I want to fight anybody in front of me and get back to where I was and continue to climb and get that world title shot again um but you know at the end of the day I feel like anybody who's in the UFC they have a different challenge to bring to the table I'm a person who loves challenges and so my goal is just to get active, get to feeling like myself, get rack up some wins, get back um, on my winning streak and stuff. And so, you know, after I fought uh, Panny, I just asked for another fight and they offered me Julia and that's how that came about. You mentioned obviously being removed from the rankings. How does it feel to see that after like the hard work you've put in? Was it because of the use harder thing? Honestly, it's super frustrating. Um, yeah, it was because of the USADA thing. Apparently, like when you go under suspension like that, they remove everybody from that. So it's super frustrating to see where you work so hard to get to and then how easily you're taken out of. And then all of a sudden you're just kind of replaced wherever. So for me, you know, I don't really care about the rankings um, as much. It might sound like I do at this moment, but like I actually don't because at the end of the day, you could be number one, you could be number 25. If you put on a good fight, I mean, you're right back up there. You're going to get a world title shot, whatever it is. Um, so opportunities present themselves a lot differently. Um, but yeah, that's how that happened. So the last time we spoke was just before the USADA thing happened. So do you mind just going into what happened there? Cause you self-reported it, didn't you? Uh, well, I actually, I mean, that's how they put it. But I actually called for a TUE, which is supposed to be our exemption um, program. Yeah. And basically, like I said, anybody who follows me, they've known um, when after I fought Misha, I went into three major surgeries and then I developed a thyroid issue and I was getting tested for thyroid cancer, um, autoimmune diseases, like all this stuff that was going on. They couldn't figure it out. And then finally, I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Uh I shot up to 174 pounds bigger than what I've ever been in my entire life. Like I just couldn't figure out my body. I was balding, all this stuff was going on. So, you know, they put me on some medicine and whatnot and just things were not working. Like the medicine kind of controlled it a little bit, but then when I fought Jermaine, um, I ended up missing weight. Like my body was just shutting down on me. There was no way, uh, I could get past 137. So it was just taking a hit on me emotionally, um, as well as physically, and then after that, uh, obviously, um, you know, I fought a few more fights and I was like, okay, I need to like really figure out this thyroid issue. Uh, it's just, it's been an uncomfortable lifestyle. Like I feel like I'm living in my body, but I don't even understand my body. And it's weird when my whole life I've been in tune with my body, especially being an athlete who cuts weight. So I went and seen a hormone specialist when I seen the hormone specialist, uh, basically I'm estrogen dominant and produce like zero testosterone. So they were worried about like breast cancer and different things. So there was stuff going on with that and getting testing done. And the doctor was like, you know, I want to put you on a micro dose of testosterone to get your body to understand that this is what it needs to produce. And hopefully you can like start producing this on your own again. 
So that was pretty much the case um, that I was under the impression of. And then I'm the type of person that I get the Monday through Sunday little pill things and I'll put like my vitamins in there. So I put my pills in there with my vitamins and I was just taking my medicine. And one day I like went to go refill it and I looked at the bottle and I was just like, this doesn't say testosterone on it. So I like uh, Googled it and it was like seven keto DHEA or whatever. Um, in like the world, the way the world sees it is it's actually a fat burner apparently. So like, wow, what I'm going to sweat more, but the way that USADA has it listed is a performance enhancer, which is outrageous, especially the dose I was on. So I called UFC anyways. Um, and I was like, Hey, like I need to get an exemption for all this and stuff. (coughs) And basically it turned into this whole thing where I got denied along with tons of other athletes who get denied their TUEs. And I had to self-report, which turned into a really frustrating situation. Cause it's like, I, all I'm trying to do is get healthy. Like I've been battling this for years now. And like, uh, so anyways, pretty much how to turn myself in, how to write a statement out to the world, um, which was extremely frustrating for me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, it's a little dry right now. <laughs> Let me grab some water, actually. But uh, <coughs> had to turn myself in for that. And then um, they were like, well, since you turned yourself in, we'll give you a retroactive suspension of six months, which is annoying. And so there I was sitting around for six months. Obviously, after the health issues you mentioned, though, it must have been good to have that break a little. <coughs> Obviously, what? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, after those health issues, it must have been quite good to get a little bit of a break, though, right? Um, you know, as frustrating as it was, it was actually nice because it kind of forced me to take a break that I would have never taken. It gave me the opportunity to really just set reset emotionally mentally physically spiritually um I got stuff done I did stuff that uh I felt like I probably lost within myself throughout the few years because I've been nothing but focused on fighting so it was actually really good and then it gave me the time to since all that happened I was like you know what like I'm gonna do this a lot different and started working with a nutritionist and kind of just figuring my body out in a completely different way got away from anything that goes in my system, <clears throat> did blood work to figure things out again and see where we're at. And now I actually feel like the healthiest I've been in years. So it was good. Obviously, <coughs> you don't want to speak out against USADA and the UFC and things like that. But do you think there should be a bit more sort of leniency when it comes to health issues like that? Absolutely. You know, I know that there's cases out there where guys have had like um <clears throat> their testosterone issues or issues with even uh being able to have kids and stuff and they get on medications to try to do this and build different parts of their lives and they're over here getting in trouble as a professional athlete and that's where it gets super frustrating you know i love the fact of a clean sport and everything that they're doing but it's just frustrating because it's like you know you've had those athletes who've ruined it for people like myself and other athletes who we're just trying to get our health under control or different things, but because people were jacking around and really wanting to like enhance their performance and do different things. Now here we are in this boat, but the frustrating part was just the fact that they've been following my case for all this time. They've like seen my results. They've been trying to help me with stuff. Uh, they seen my blood work. And then when all this happened, you know, they came out and tested me immediately then. And then I was getting tested once a week for four weeks And like the second time that they came out, which was a six day difference from the first time they tested me and it was already out of my system and they took the medications, tested the medications, like all kinds of stuff. And it's just like, I don't get it. Like you guys literally have followed my case. You guys have seen my results. You guys spoke with the doctors, you spoke with the nurse. And so it's like, it's transparent, but it turned into a situation that whatever it is, what it is. And, you know, some good things came out of it. So. And obviously that's not the only health issue you've had to deal with. 
um, before your last fight, you had a pretty severe battle with COVID. Um, just talk a bit about that a little. <coughs> yeah, so I was originally supposed to fight Panny uh, June 12th, the pay-per-view card. And um, I coach high school gymnastics. And, you know, I mean, it can come from anywhere, but I'm assuming that's where I contracted the virus at just because some of my gymnasts ended up popping positive and I was the one that was mostly around them and spotting them and doing different things so um anyways I came down with the symptoms and it really felt like a bad case of the flu at first <clears throat> um had a fever just really bad head cold like just was really miserable so of course I stayed home quarantined was resting reached out to the doctors and they were like you know like keep your fluid and take up, take all the vitamins and stuff. And I was doing that. And then all of a sudden, three days later, like I felt good, felt perfectly fine. So I was like, okay, cool. But I had to stay in quarantine. So, you know, just doing stuff around my house, hanging out, waiting for my quarantine to be up. Uh, two days later, all of a sudden it just knocked me on my butt. And I've honestly never been so scared in my life. Like it gave me a different perspective, but I went through and like got my will together, did all the things like was put my ducks in a row for everything that needed to be taken care of because I honestly felt like I was going to like die. Like I've never felt my body doing what it was doing. It felt like it was drastically shutting down. Um, I was sick for over 31 days. I had like a migraine that was getting so bad. The pain was going down my spine. So I was like sleeping on ice packs or trying to sleep. <laughs> then I uh, like got really bad insomnia. So then I couldn't sleep. And that's terrible because when you're already exhausted and not feeling well, and then be even more exhausted and you're not catching up on rest. So it was just like one thing after another. <coughs> and then I ended up on um, oxygen. I ended up going to the hospital because it got so bad. And I felt like mountains were just sitting on my chest. Went to the hospital. They put me on oxygen. Um, I was on steroids for my lungs. And then uh, they had me on an inhaler. Um, I tried. I think every medication possible for headaches, nothing was working to break that. And then I lost my taste and my smell. The body aches were like one of a kind. And then it just felt like, you know, I could barely get up and walk like five, six steps. And I felt like I ran a marathon um, <clears throat> and it just continued. And then I of course didn't want anybody around me because I was scared to give it to my family. I mean, I'm the healthiest in my family but it was also like terrifying being alone. So my mom ended up coming to my house and she was staying with me and kind of just checking in on me. And one night I woke up in the middle of the night, I was already on two liters of oxygen and I woke up feeling like I was suffocating. So she called 911. I ended up going back to the hospital and it was just, it was, it was a battle. It was a serious battle. And then trying to come back from that, like the fatigue and everything, um, I had to go see a cardiac specialist and all kinds of different things and get some testing done. And then trying to get back into training to even prepare for a fight was, that was one of a kind. Like I, it was frustrating because of course me being who I am, like I just wanted to go and I'm used to what my body couldn't do, but I couldn't do nothing. Like I would barely do like a set of bicep curls or something. And I was just winded. So it was like, I was doing mini sets of things. And then I was doing like five minute breaks in between everything. And it took a while to actually build back up. You know, it's crazy hearing that when you see people who still seem to think it's like something that just old people get, you know, um, seeing yeah, yourself. People, uh, don't take it serious. And uh, after experiencing it, they should take it serious. I mean, see yourself, obviously, fought for the world title, professional athlete, get it. These other fighters, Chimaev had it bad. He's fighting soon. Um, there's been a lot and like there's a lot of examples now of athletes who have suffered pretty badly from it. Yeah. But then you know, quite a few that, you know, they uh, quite a few of them too. They had some pretty bad cases and they were like, we just don't understand. And, you know, some really well-known names and they were just like, we feel like we're going to die. And it's like, it's a really weird feeling. Um, so let me tell you, after experiencing that sense of fear, <coughs> it almost like sets you up for a place that like not many things in life kind of scare me right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I suppose that's one of the problems of being around gyms and stuff, isn't it? Things are contagious. Um, 
yeah yeah but despite that you came back to that last fight fairly quickly right um but you'd been out for over a year um obviously how mm. much of a how much of it was how much of a relief was it to get back in there and get that win after everything you'd been through it was exciting it was super exciting just to get back out there <clears throat> it was exciting to feel completely healthy um you know i mean i still had some questions to as far as like because there were some days that i would just like fatigue really insane at the gym so i still had some questions to how my body was going to react going at such a high intense pace um but overall i mean getting back out there just having fun like it was a really smooth fight week my weight cut was the easiest I've had in years. Um, and then I remember walking out and as soon as I got into the octagon, I was like, Ooh, all right, this is what this feels like again. Like it was completely different. So to experience that and whatnot, um, but it's just motivating. It's exciting. And that's why I wanted such a quick turnaround just to continue to knock off that ring rest and climb up. Obviously, you talk about the fear and things like that, but how else would you say that going through something like that changes your mindset, both like as a fighter and just as a person? You know, I mean, it's just like, for one, I feel like at some point in life, we always go through experiences, whether it's losing loved ones or some sort of trauma that we might go through to where we kind of have like an eye opener. It's like, okay, yeah, life is short, but then you like, kind of forget that in time you know mm -hmm. what I mean and it's like in the back of our minds I think we all know that life is short but we just don't yeah. really pay attention to it but going through the whole experience with COVID and stuff like it just kind of really shifted my mind frame like I really learned to like I've always been like gracious and grateful for everything and like um <clears throat> but I just really learned to like slow down again appreciate the little things like just truly live in the moment again and be present. Um, and like I said, I mean, there's fighting is like, it's a part of, it's not who I am. It's just my passion. And, you know, it's easy to kind of get caught up, uh, in the emotions. I mean, walking out to the octagon is probably one of the most nerve wracking and scariest feelings that I've honestly ever felt. Like it takes a lot to get in there. And, um, but then at the same time, it's like, it's so thrilling and exciting and like, it's just a weird mix of emotions, but there is that fear that comes along with it. I mean, you're walking out there and you're getting locked into an octagon with somebody who wants to take your head off and vice versa. You know what I mean? Like you want to take theirs off and, uh, it's easy to get caught up in those emotions to where like you may like build your opponents up or the emotions just get so heightened more than what it really is. And, um, you know, I feel like going through the whole COVID experience and truly experiencing like the fact that there might not be a tomorrow, just, I don't know, like so much was going through my mind in that time when I had nothing to do, but like just lay around and feel how I was feeling. And when the doctors were just like, all right, like this hits everybody so different. So we're just, what's your worst symptom? We're going to start there and just kind of treat it the way that we know. And that's what we were doing, but there's no answers to it. And I told my mom, I was like, you know, I feel like this is how like cancer patients and different people like feel like you get terrible news and like, you just don't know what your body's going to do. And it is truly scary. So now it's like fighting, like it's fun all over again. Like it just brought back this yeah. rage and flame of passion and excitement. And like, it's not like, I'm like, all right, you're just another person. And like, we're going to go out there and have fun and beat the crap out of each other. Let's do it. That's a good segue to move back onto the fight. Um, obviously, we're just under two months out from the fight, but you've known yeah. about the fight for a while. It got announced a quite a while ago. Um, you've obviously got a bit more preparation time than a lot of fights we saw during the pandemic. We saw a lot made at short notice. How refreshing is that for you? Um, it's nice. You know, I'm actually that athlete that, like, shorter camps are better for me. Um but this one works, works perfect. My last fight, uh, you know, I mean, immediately it was just like, come on, give me another fight. So it was two days after my last fight. So, I mean, coming out of a 12 week fight camp, going into a fight already still being in shape. Like I gave myself a week off to enjoy some time and, um, enjoy a little bit of food. And then now it's just like being back into it and being completely in shape and just continuing to sharpen my tools. Like 
since I'm already in great shape, we don't have to worry about weight. We don't have to worry about all these other things that we would normally do getting presented with a fight. Like this is a really smooth camp. Like it's simple to just work on lots of different technique. Um, like I said, sharpen the tools and get in even better shape. So just, um, one week after your fight, we've got Amanda Nunes, Juliana Pena. Amanda, obviously a former opponent of yours, but someone you're close to as well. Obviously, she trained at ATT with Tisha. Um, Juliana, of course, you know, going back to the Ultimate Fighter. So how do you see this fight going? And obviously, Amanda looks so perfect. So how do you think Juliana can threaten her? Um, you know, I mean, Juliana is a tough girl. <clears throat> um, she's aggressive when she wants to be and stuff, but I really like... For me, I see Amanda running through her. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think Amanda's going to be the one to get her hand raised. Yeah. With a win over <laughs> Julia, how, how far do you think you are away from fighting people like Juliana or even getting another shot at the title if with a win over Julia? You know, I've been trying to get Juliana to sign that dotted line for years now since the Ultimate Fighter. Um, so who knows if she'll ever do that. But... uh like I said before, I mean, you could sit here and you can be number one and you can get that a uh, good opportunity or you could be number 20. It doesn't matter. And so it's just all about, you know, I'm focused on this next step and focus on Julia. It's not going to be an easy fight. It's going to be a very high paced, intense fight, I think. And so, uh, but at the end of the day, like that performance can jump me right back up there and who knows my next fight, what it'll be. Yeah, you mentioned Juliana there. I actually, when I was checking like the record, I had to double check that you guys hadn't fought each other because you've both been around since I'm a fighter. You've both been towards the top of the division. Obviously, she's had some injury problems as well as your issues, but um, it was weird to me that you guys had never fought each other. She will not fight me. <laughs> Is there some beef there? What's going on? Um, I would probably say a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> is that I am dying right now through <laughs> this interview. But uh yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just like we, you know, I felt bad for her on the ultimate fighter. Um nobody really cared for her there. And like I'm the type of person that I have such a big heart. So it's just kind of one of those situations that like like I said, I felt bad for her. I tried to befriend her, and then it was just one of those things to where like sometimes you come across people and your personality types don't match and that's absolutely fine. <clears throat> like you stay in your lane and I'll stay in mine. And so that's kind of what was going on. And, you know, I remember one day we were, we attempted to spar and it got pretty heated and the coaches pulled us apart. And then it's just been like, Oh, I don't know. Something about her just gets under my skin ever since then. And then we were roommates. So I was having to deal with her nonsense in there. And um, I don't know. I've just, I always thought it would be a great fight, but she seems to avoid it. So, so what do you think of the way she's kind of been talking to Amanda? She's kind of been shouting about this for a while now. What do you think of that? I think she's going to regret running her mouth, honestly. I mean, she's sitting here just saying all kinds of shit. And then, you know, Tisha fought on <coughs> um, that pay-per-view in Houston that, Amanda and them were supposed to originally fight on, but Amanda got COVID and Juliana jumped up at the press conference and just started yapping like she knows how to. And it was just like, that's the shit that I'm talking about. Like, you know, people love it. They love the entertainment. They love all this stuff. But like, I don't know. You got this girl. She's had her injuries. She's had all this stuff. She's been the ultimate fighter winner, but she's been sitting around for a long time too. And like, she just, I don't know. Girl loves to chat. <clears throat> and, uh, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, she's going to regret it. So, Back to the fight that matters, though, Raquel Pennington versus Julia Avila the week after that, at December 18th. How do you visualize this one in your mind? Like I said, I visualize it as an exciting fight. I visualize it um, as a fast-paced fight. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I mean, focusing on exactly what I can control and what I'm doing and so, uh, you know, I plan on dominating wherever the fight goes, whether it's stand up, whether it's grappling, whether it's a cage match, whether it's <clears throat> um, jujitsu. And so uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I'm getting my hand raised. Yeah. 
So obviously, without looking too far past Julia, because she's obviously a skilled fighter who's on the rise herself. Um, what's what's next for you, uh, Juliana? You hope, right? Amanda, I hope. <laughs> yeah, oh, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure, Juliana would definitely work. Um, <laughs> anybody, you know. At the end of the day, I mean, I'm getting older. Like, I feel like I'm in my prime right now and i'm really like starting to kick off feeling healthy and everything again so it's like i feel like this is my time to make my run and being a professional athlete like our windows are so short um so i just want to make the best of it for the rest of the time that i got that's a great way to end i think um just feel free to shout out any sponsors you've got if you want um i'll give a shout out to egg weights uh they're always hooking me up with new fancy gear sit there keep my shoulders in shape and just constantly burning um boyke's air dried beef let me tell you if you haven't had air dried beef and you're a beef jerky lover you'll taste the difference in it but sh- go get that um lou nutrition who obviously he's my nutritionist and he has seriously just like changed my world around with things and truly helped me so i couldn't be any more grateful um of course to all my family and my friends who have always been there since day one and supported this crazy journey. And then to, you know, my true fans out there, um, you know, as much as I inspire people, it's a positive circle for me. I'm inspired by everybody's stories and the things that everybody's sharing with me. And then uh, just everybody who helps me, all my teammates, my coaches, and all the ones that stand beside me. Awesome. I want to thank you for the time today, Raquel. It's been a great chat. Um, Looking forward to the fight in December. Awesome. Thank you. It was great chatting with you.